Ron Wyatt said that he found chariot wheels at the bottom of the Gulf of Aqaba, which he identified as the Red Sea. In today's video, we are going to look at chariot wheels and see how they compare to Ron Wyatt's. Today, we are going to talk about chariot wheels. If you like these videos and wish to help out, please hit that subscribe button and please consider supporting us on Patreon and by possibly buying my book, The Ark of the Covenant in its Egyptian Context, An Illustrated Journey. Okay, in 1994, Ron Wyatt on national television told the world that he found chariot wheels at the bottom of the Gulf of Aqaba, one and a half miles offshore at a depth of 60 to 200 feet. Now, many people at the time regarded this as a hoax. And most of Ron Wyatt's claims had faded away into memory, more or less, until last year. Besides murder hornets and a pandemic, 2020 also gave us the third Patterns of Evidence film, The Red Sea Miracle. This film brought back and resurrected many of the claims that were made by Ron Wyatt. One of those claims is that he found a certain four-spoked Egyptian chariot wheel at the bottom of the Gulf of Aqaba, this being his evidence for the Exodus crossing happening there. What we're going to do is we're going to take his photographs and make a three-dimensional model and then compare them to a three-dimensional model of a real Egyptian chariot wheel. And we're going to see how the two compare. Okay, so here is our model. Again, the one on the left is based upon Ron Wyatt's photographs that were supplied by the Wyatt Archaeological Research, also known as the Wyatt Museum. And he dates this chariot wheel to the reign of Amenhotep II. The chariot wheel on the right is based upon my photographs of the chariot of Yuya that is in the Egyptian Museum. Now, this, this chariot of Yuya was a royal chariot. It was a gift given by King Amenhotep III to his stepfather, Yuya. And the two chariot wheels, one from Amenhotep II, the one from Amenhotep III, should date to about 50 years apart. So they are roughly contemporary. So as we look at these, we should say, okay, these come at roughly the same time in Egyptian history. So we are comparing apples to apples. So let's look at the construction of each chariot wheel and make some observations. Let's start with Wyatt's wheel. Now, any chariot wheel is made of three or more components. You have a hub in the center into which the axle and the spokes are fitted. You have spokes, just like on a wheel of a bicycle. And you have a rim. That's the outer portion of the chariot wheel. Now, the portion of the rim that meets the road is called the tread. Now, in the case of Ron Wyatt's chariot wheel, you have a very blocky central hub that's, that's more or less a simple cylinder. Into that hub are four square spokes, and then you have a deep outer rim. It's very, very deep. And when I mean deep, I mean it takes up a lot of the length of the radius of the wheel. The entire wheel is very heavy, a very blocky design, and it's entirely covered with gold, we'll presume gold foil. And even the tread is covered in gold foil. And we'll explain later why that's important, because that's a really critical detail. Now, let's look at Yuya's chariot wheel. What we find here is a very different design. The hub 
is very long, it's very narrow, and it sticks out from both sides of the chariot wheel. So it's that length is a way that the chair that the Egyptians used to prevent the wheel from wobbling. You can put it, give it more stability on its axle. The other thing about this is that the spokes don't insert directly into the hub. There is actually a bronze piece that's built around the hub that is has six sockets and it's made of bronze. And that bronze is overlaid with gold foil. Now when we look at Yuya's chariot wheel, one of the interesting things we note is that the only part of it that's metal is that hub section. The spokes aren't covered with metal, and neither is the rim. So the only portion of the wheel that's metal is the hub. Now, the Yuya chariot wheel has six spokes. Unlike Wyatt's chariot wheel, where the spokes are wide and thick, these are very narrow. They're very thin. If you look at it side on, they look extremely thin, but they're wide. They cover the whole cross section of the wheel. And each spoke is fitted into the ferrule on the hub. So it's the ferrule that is holding the spoke in place. Apart from that, then we have a very shallow rim. It's wide and shallow. And it is made out of laminated wood. This is very interesting because we have assumed in our culture that we don't really know when the wheel was invented, when that's the furthest things from the truth. We can actually date the wheel to about 2300 BC in Mesopotamia. And that's because the wheel is an extension of bow making technology. When people made hunting bows and composite bows, they laminated wood and stretched it with steam to give it more tension. So when a chariot wheel was made, how they made the wheel was they steamed layers of wood and fitted it around the spokes. And then they fit another piece of wood around that. And as the wood dried and, and cured, it created elastic tension that held the whole wheel together. It's a phenomenal feat of engineering. When we look at these two, two wheels, we see that they are very, very different in purpose. The Egyptian chariot wheel is light and thin. And that's because chariot in ancient Egypt were meant to be fast, light vehicles that if they got stuck in sand, you could just lift the whole chariot out and be off, off again running. So it's a, it's a chariot wheel that was designed specifically for desert travel. So now that we've given an overview of both chariot wheels, now I'm going to say why I think that Wyatt's wheel is not just a forgery, but a really, really bad modern forgery. Okay. The first reason is, well, kind of obvious. Just look at the two chariot wheels. It looks nothing like the, an Egyptian chariot wheel. Now, there have been people who said that, that Egyptian chariot wheels can have four, six, or eight spokes. This has nothing to do with the spoke count. Now, it is true that the, the Egyptians did experiment with four and eight spokes very early on in the 18th dynasty. But the Egyptians also standardized really, really quickly to the six-spoke chariot wheel because it was strong, it was light, it, it economized on wood. Wood was a very expensive material in ancient Egypt. A lot of it had to be imported. So you didn't waste wood when you didn't have to. So it was economical. The second thing is, it also economized, the, the Egyptian chariot wheel also economized on gold. They didn't put gold where they didn't need it. Because again, gold is 
heavy. You don't want heavy stuff on a chariot. Another thing matter with Ron Wyatt's chariot wheel, why I think it's a forgery and a bad forgery, was because Ron Wyatt could not have found this chariot wheel where he said he found it. He said he found it at 1.5 miles off the coast at 60 to 200 feet. At 1.5 miles off the coast of the Gulf of Aqaba, the depth there is at over 500 feet. And even so, he could not have dove to 200 feet. No diver, scuba diver, in 1985 or 1984 could have dove to 200 feet because that scuba gear equipment was limited to 130 feet. So he couldn't have been where he said he was when he took that photograph of the chariot wheel. Furthermore, I think one of the most damning things about this chariot wheel is the fact that there is actually gold foil on the tread. What is supposed to be telling us that this chariot wheel was driven across Egypt, through the Sinai, and then was lost in the Gulf of Aqaba. The fact is that when a chariot is driven, gold is soft. Okay? Sand is an abrasive. There is no way that the gold foil on the tread would have survived a trip across the Sinai. This chariot looks brand new. And that's, that's probably the final thing I think that is really marks it as a forgery. It has perfectly flat surfaces. Surfaces that look like they have been created with power tools. You go to the Egyptian museum, you look at an Egyptian chariot or any other gold piece of furniture and look at the gold surfaces, nothing is perfectly flat. Even in, under ideal preservation. Nothing looks flat because it was all hand done. Handcrafted wood, handcrafted metal, everything, every surface has an imperfection. That's just the nature of handcrafted items. There is no way this chariot was an ancient chariot wheel because you don't have flat surfaces, perfectly flat surfaces. So, anyway. That's my take on this chariot wheel, and I hope this gave you some really good information about real Egyptian chariot wheels. It's a fascinating subject, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.